and that will give us the total factory overhead. So we're going to have total factory overhead. I'm going to select tab, tab. We're going to pull that over to the outside. We're going to sum these two numbers up. We're just adding up the 78,111 and the 63,000. I'm just going to sum those up like this. Sum those two items. So those added together. I'm going to indent this one more time. If you're wondering how these are indented when they're in uh, the same cell or the same column, you go up to the home tab, you go up to this, and you indent. So we're saying this is what we're going to calculate. Here it is indented. Here it is having been calculated. We do not indent direct labor because it's already, it's just one number in the outer column. We could also underline these if we wanted to go in here and go into the home tab, font, underline, and underline here, go into the home tab, font, and underline in this way as well. That'll give us our total manufacturing cost. So total manufacturing cost, I'm going to tab that all the way out to the end. And we, we actually do not like triple, you know, indent this one. We're going to bring it back to the base in this case and we're, we're going to add up only the outer column the column we only add up one column at a time so that's of course going to include the direct materials the direct labor and the factory overhead that we have calculated so that's going to equal the sum of this direct materials direct labor and the factory overhead and enter now we don't have any work in process because this is basically kind of a simplified problem in that we're saying that whatever we produce is we're going to produce in that time period we're not going to have anything left over in the production process we're going to start it we're going to complete it in the same time period so i'll just put in the, the work in process here just so you can see how that would be in here so here we have the work in process at the beginning once again we, we would get that from of course the the uh, balance sheet up here but th there is no work in process notice we have raw materials and finished goods what that indicates is that it's a very fairly quick process to manufacture and therefore we're not caught at the end with a, with a lot of stuff that's within the processing's time that it's basically being we start it we complete it and so we have zero work in process if there was work in process of course uh, at the beginning we would have to account for that and then we're going to say that's going to be uh, the total manufacturing cost plus what was in beginning work in process and then we would have to take out what is still in the work in process the stuff that's not done yet stuff not yet in ending inventory once again we're saying it's zero in this problem there's nothing that has not been completed we're going to complete it within the time period so that's going to be this it would be this minus this so we got the um cost of goods manufactured will then be this 1,187,685 uh the next piece we want to take a look at that we'll need for the income statement is to calculate the cost of goods sold we're going to need this number instead of having purchases as we would have if we just purchased the inventory we have in replacing that in the calculation of cost of goods sold, this number being the cost of goods manufactured. So let's plug this into the cost of goods sold formula. We start cost of goods sold out with the beginning finished goods inventory, just like we would if we bought the inventory. Same process, although we are manufacturing in this process. Beginning finished goods inventory is going to be whatever's on the balance sheet, of course, up here. So we're going to go up to the balance sheet and we say, uh, what did we start with in Finished goods inventory, this is 325,540. So 325,540 is what we have. And then we're going to add to that. What are we going to add to it? What we just calculated up here, the cost of goods manufactured. Instead of purchases, if we were in a purchasing company, we just bought and sold inventory, it would be purchases, of course. But now we had to do this whole worksheet so that we can figure out the stuff that we turned from raw material into inventory through our labor, through our overhead and of course the raw materials and then we're going to say less the ending finished goods inventory so we have the ending finished goods inventory what do we have still in finished goods at the end and that's going to equal i'm going to say equals and we're going to go up to the production up here and we saw our budget and we had the production we're going to say that uh, the less the beginning the ending finished goods inventory is right here so budgeted ending finished goods but that's in units that's in units and remember they told us over here on this that we have the production cost per unit we're going to say that per unit it costs 19 uh, $19.50 .50. so we're going to take the units at the end multiply that times $19.50 and so that's what we're going to have less the ending inventory so now we're allocating that to the, the portion that is still left over in ending inventory here's what we started with here's what we purchased Here's, I mean, here's what we made, manufactured. Here's what we say is still left. So now we're going to do the calculation for the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, then, is going to equal the beginning inventory plus what we manufactured minus what's still in there. 
that's what we have actually sold at this time. 